Just this June 2023, a rare five unit townhouse building in West Village, New York City popped up on the market for $16.5 million. One that also has a celebrity history. While he didn't own the place, the late actor James Gandolfini, best known for playing Tony Soprano on our TV screens, rented a stunning and spacious unit here for quite some time in 2009 while he was appearing on Broadway. At the time of his passing in 2013, James owned a $1.5 million main residence in California, New Jersey, a stunning New York City apartment which spanned over 3,000 square feet of space, and even an estate across the pond in Italy which he kept very private. In 2017, James Gandolfini's luxurious apartment, located in the West Village area of New York City, went up for sale at $7.5 million, but in the end, the place sold a year later for $6.2 million. Sadly, James passed suddenly at age 51 after suffering a heart attack while on vacation in Italy with his family. The beloved actor is well known for his legendary portrayal of mob boss Tony Soprano on HBO's hit show The Sopranos. His one-time apartment in West Village spanned a spacious 3,300 square feet and came complete with four bedrooms and four bathrooms. He had lived in the large loft unit with his former wife, Marcy Wudarski, who is the mother of his son, Michael. While he had remarried since then, the former couple spent many years creating this home by combining two separate units they purchased. James first purchased one apartment here for $850,000 in 1999, and then successfully snagged another unit shortly after for just over $1 million. James and Marcy were able to combine the two apartments together into one larger and even nicer one before they split in 2002. Later on, however, public records show that James transferred the two spaces, apartments 2G and 2H from him to Marcy. The loft was being sold by realtor Julie Reprecht, who explained at the time, this is where Jim raised his son. He was a wonderful, kind person who took the time for everyone. Much of the space in the apartment took on a contemporary feel, with an open plan layout and high 10-foot ceilings. There were also a lot of clean white walls and large windows to let in plenty of natural light, especially in the 30-foot living room, which was flanked by windows. Elsewhere, there was a separate den too. Other highlights of this apartment included a master suite boasting a large attached bath with jacuzzi, a separate shower and custom-fit walk-in closet, and and elsewhere in the unit, two sets of washers and dryers in a cozy office. One of the other features of James' former apartment was the outdoor terrace, which created a hidden oasis within the urban landscape of New York City. This gave the family a private retreat where the actor could unwind and soak up the city's energy. Lush greenery, comfortable seating, and breathtaking views made it an ideal spot for both solitude and socializing. Living in a neighborhood like West Village, Gandolfini had access to a wealth of amenities from trendy restaurants restaurants and boutique shops to cultural landmarks and theaters. The vibrant energy of New York City was right at his doorstep. Just recently, a building in New York City with quite the history popped up for sale at $16.5 million. Located in the desirable West Village neighborhood, this unassuming wide townhouse boasts more than meets the eye. The building itself is the only original in the block, dating almost 200 years back and was built back in 1835 by an associate of the Rothschilds family. The 25-foot wide townhouse building was constructed in a Greek revival style and while it served once as a single family home, now it's a five apartment dwelling. Back in the day, it was actually home to the well-known robber Jay Gold, one of the richest men in 19th century America, who made his money speculating in real worlds and often thought to control the stock market. But regardless of that history, James Gandolfini called this building home, renting out a stunning unit here back in 2009 when he was in Broadway and used it as a study or home away from home so he could get into character. His one-time unit was located on the second floor and offered 11-foot ceilings, making the space feel super large and open, as well as two decorative fireplaces to cozy up the place. James also had access to a large 625 square foot private terrace, which is rare in New York City. Meanwhile, the building as a whole had a massive 2,300 square feet of outdoor space between the flat roof and multiple terraces. James' former apartment here, as well as all the rest, had their own laundry, individual air conditioning, high-end appliances, including in the kitchen, as well as marble kitchens and bathrooms. The building was last sold in 2005 to Leia Poller, an artist and sculptor who renovated and updated each of the building's five apartments, as well as a medical office on the garden level and a cellar. The building also has the potential to be turned back into a single-family residence or combining apartments to 
to make bigger dwellings. The parlor level offers the original curved staircase and 13.5 foot ceilings, and boasts a studio unit with floor to ceiling windows and the original shutters, as well as a one bedroom loft style unit at the back with designer kitchen, a mezzanine loft, and a spacious landscape terrace. The parlor floor, the formal sitting room, and what was stunning library in Gold's time could be restored to a 77 foot long singular space by combining the front and back units, passing Gandolfini's former unit up on the third floor. There's a one bedroom unit with views over the gardens and above that, the fourth floor, which offers two bedrooms and some bright skylights. Also in 2009, James purchased a family home outside of the Big Apple in the posh seclusion of Califon, New Jersey in the wooded hills of Tewksbury. He and his then wife, former model Deborah Lynn closed on the property in summer of that year for $1.5 million. While he kept this family residence quite under wraps in order to have some at-home privacy, records show the two-story colonial style home was constructed in 2006 and sold on 8.76 acres of sprawling land. Inside, the mansion-sized home spanned 5,577 square feet with five bedrooms and 3.5 bathrooms. Other features we know James' former home offered include included two two-story fireplaces, high cathedral ceilings in many rooms, high quality finishes, and roomy living areas. James and his wife's former master suite offered a serene escape with luxurious amenities, while the backyard provided a private oasis with landscaped gardens, a patio, and more. A perfect retreat for relaxation and entertainment. Not only was there a jacuzzi outside, there was also an in-ground swimming pool and a sunroom, as well as an open open style porch attached to the home. The one time Gandolfini residence wasn't visible from the road and offered plenty of seclusion. According to Gandolfini's publicist, Angela Tarantino, the actor had been commuting from Tewksbury to Manhattan for a one hour drive where he was performing on Broadway in God of Carnage. Prior to this, the late Sopranos star previously lived in a 150 year old colonial on 34 acres in Chester Township. Gandolfini also owned a property in Italy, embracing his heritage and love for the country. Details about this specific residence, including its location and characteristics, aren't widely available. However, it's known that Gandolfini cherished his Italian roots and valued a connection to his ancestral land. It's also said that after his passing, the Italy estate was left to his children. Throughout his life, James Gandolfini enjoyed acquiring properties that reflected his refined taste, as well as his desire for privacy. Whether it was one of his sophisticated New York City apartments, his grand house in New Jersey, or his Italian retreat, each property showed his appreciation for fine craftsmanship, luxury amenities, and a comfortable yet stylish living environment. James' real estate portfolio not only exemplified his success in the entertainment industry, but also allowed him to create havens that represented his personal style and provided a sense of tranquility amid the demands of his profession. Although he's no longer with us, his remarkable properties stand as a testament to his legacy and his eye for exceptional residences, especially to raise a family. That's going to bring today's James Gandolfini house tour to a close. But before we go, answer this question for me. Is there any character from a TV show you adored so much because of the way an actor portrayed them? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and if you'd like to check out another tour before you go, then stay tuned because next we'll look at the homes of John Travolta. Hollywood legend John Travolta has had plenty of years in an A-list career to build up a property portfolio to match his success and then some. Currently, he spends most of his time at his longtime airport estate near Ocala, Florida, which he purchased with his late wife Kelly Preston in 2001 for $3.5 million. The 9.5 acre spread is located in a residential air park and includes a 7,500 foot runway that goes right to John's back door and is any pilot's dream. Travolta also added a Calabasas Villa mansion to his real estate holdings in 2019, which he spends his time in when he's out in LA while selling two properties, one in Maine and one in Clearwater, Florida in recent years. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. John Travolta is an actor who rose to fame during the 1970s, first appearing on a sitcom, Welcome Back Coder, and then landing 
landing roles in a handful of box office hit films, including Saturday Night Fever and Grease. While John's showbiz career hit a slight decline in the 80s, he made a comeback in the 90s with his role in Pulp Fiction, my personal favorite, and then went on to star in many more movies over the years. Aside from his long-spanning career in Hollywood, John is also a private pilot, reportedly owning four to five aircraft. While the actor has maintained an impressive array of mansions across America, his longtime home is his place on the residential air park Jumbo Lair Aviation Estates in Florida, and he and his late wife, actress Kelly Preston, were among the first residents of the community, which gives homeowners their own fly-in and fly-out access. Sadly, his wife Kelly passed away recently in 2020 after battling breast cancer. John still lives there to this day. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Today looking at the homes of John Travolta. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit me up on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. In summer 2021, John Travolta offloaded one of his mega properties, this one being a waterfront retreat in Clearwater, Florida for $4 million. While it might sound like an uncommon location, this home sat right down the street from the Church of Scientology's flag building, which was perfect for one of the religion's most famed members like John. And of course, he isn't the only celebrity to own property in Clearwater, with fellow Scientologists like Tom Cruise and Kirstie Alley, among others, having home here. After the loss of his wife Kelly, John decided to also let go of his residence here, making a million more on the sale considering he bought it over four years prior for $3 million. The spread sat on just under three acres of land, all of which was protected by a high wall, secure entry gates, and tropical greenery. While past the gates and driveway, you'll arrive at the multi-level main house, which boasted a flat roof and pops of orange. Built in 1988, John's former contemporary home had a floor plan with over 6,100 square feet of space, along with five bedrooms and 5.5 baths sprinkled throughout. Of course, the home had been immensely updated and renovated to give it the modern look it has today, and its design has expensive finishes like French oak flooring, handcrafted plaster walls, slate floor tiles, and much more. Past the sunny entryway and down a few steps, the home offered a combo living and dining area with a soaring double height ceiling and walls of glass. Here, there was also an impressive concrete fireplace on one wall and stairs leading to the upper level. The contemporary kitchen situated next to the main living area offered a large L-shaped snack bar, laminated cabinets from Germany, and a spacious breakfast nook. This space opens to the outside through glass doors, while there's also a second and more cozy family room nearby. John and Kelly's former master suite here had the best spot in the house on the top level, with a private balcony that offered amazing views, as well as a walk-in closet and spa-inspired modern ensuite bath. Each of the guest rooms in the house were also ensuite and had their very own unobstructed views of the water. Outside, the large deck off of the home had canvas shades to make for comfortable outdoor dining and relaxing. The grounds also had multiple terraces, a stunning swimming pool, and a private dock. Aside from the main house, the property further boasted a poolside cabana that could act as an art studio. In 2021, John also listed another one of his getaway homes. This one located in Owlsboro, Maine, but according to records, it hasn't yet sold. Listed at $5 million, this massive spread has served as the Travolta's family's beloved vacation home on the island of Islesboro, which can only be exclusively accessed by ferry. John first visited this island over three decades ago with his Scientologist and actress pal, Kirstie Alley, who has her own vacation home here. John and Kelly, who were newlyweds at the time, fell in love with this 40 acre waterfront property and bought it in 1991. This hotel sized mansion is perfectly secluded and situated at the end of a gravel driveway surrounded by trees. It was built back in 1904 for a prominent banking family by architects Body and stern, and inside it boasts 42 rooms with a colorful and cozy design scheme 
theme that suits the country mansion on the coast. Inside, the mansion covers a whopping 10,830 square feet of space with an unheard of 20 bedrooms and 7.5 baths throughout. It's full of classic features like rustic stone fireplaces, gilded fixtures, Tudor revival windows, and more. Each room of the home has linen, drapings, and velvet upholstery, while many of the furnishings came with the vintage mansion. In the 90s, John revealed to Architectural Digest, the house was already full of English antiques, 30% of which we refurbished and still use. The mansion's entry feels like a hotel lobby with some lounge areas and a bar, and nearby there's a formal living room with fireplace and large dining room with equally large table. Other highlights of the estate include a second level sunroom, which is one of two in the home, that offers amazing views, a ton of floral patterns and various pastel colors throughout. This sunny country kitchen has chef-grade appliances and butcher block counters, while it also boasts a huge pantry. Within the many, many bedrooms, there's still a stunning master suite with John and Kelly shared for many memorable years. This space had a fireplace, private porch, and vintage-style ensuite of its own. 14 of the guest bedrooms are located on the second level, but the third level was transformed into a fantasy children's wing. This impressive part of the mansion would be any kid's dream, boasting a schoolroom, library, a diner, a theater with its own stage, and four themed bedrooms, two of which are said to be a princess room and another a Peter Pan room. John and Kelly no doubt adored this property and put all the work into changing the mansion from its formerly dark interiors to a bright and cheery ambiance. Outside, the many acres offer everything from a swimming pool to private beach access. It also boasts a deep water dock on Sabbath Day Harbor, plenty of forest trails, and rolling lawns. While John may be offloading that home, maybe because it holds too many family memories and he doesn't need that massive space anymore, he still splits his time between two impressive mansions. In 2019, the couple decided to buy a Mediterranean-style villa mansion in the exclusive Calabasas area of LA for just under $2.7 million. Located in a guard-gated community on a half-acre plot of land, this home was built in the 90s and offers over 7,500 square feet of space with six beds and six baths over two levels. The property also comes with amazing views across the canyon and mountains and interior features like open-plan living areas, high ceilings, and four fireplaces. John and his family spent much of lockdown at the home too, even sharing a pic on Instagram last year with his new puppy Jinx in videos with his kids. The front of the villa offers a courtyard entry with a stunning three-tiered water fountain, and inside there's a double-height rotunda as well as a skylight over top the sweeping staircase. Some of the airy spaces inside of the home included a double height living room with wall of windows and a fireplace, a formal dining room, and a top of the line gourmet kitchen. Elsewhere, there was a family room with fireplace, wine closet and bar, as well as a library with handmade wood bookshelves lining the walls and second floor gallery. Many of the beautiful rooms in the home come with vaulted ceilings and natural wood beams, which are super high for an open air feel. The main floor even has an office space as well as a mirror wall gym. Outside, John has access to a handful of living and entertaining spaces too, like the shaded patio with outdoor fireplace, barbecue station and dining terrace, and an infinity edge pool and spa. Sadly, there's no airplane parking at this mansion, but that's where John's final home comes in handy. Last but most definitely not least, John keeps his sprawling airport-style main residence at the exclusive Jumbo Lair fly-in community near Ocala, Florida, in the small town of Anthony. And it's here he also keeps his collection of planes right in his yard. In 2001, John and Kelly forked out $3.5 million for this 9.5-acre spread and said, out to build their mid-century style concrete and glass dream home here, which spans about 7,000 square feet of space along with six bedrooms. There is even a 6,500 square foot garage that boasts eight efficiency apartments inside. John and Kelly showed off the luxurious estate way back in 2004 to Architectural Digest, which is any pilot or airplane lover's dream. The custom design mansion is mainly white throughout with thick concrete walls, towering columns, and walls of glass. The highlight of the interior spaces has got to be the great room, which boasts a curved wall of double height windows overlooking the tarmac out back. Here, there are contemporary chairs and low sofas with modern pops of blues 
screens, and it almost looks like a vintage travel lounge. There's also a formal dining room with an art deco style and a massive mural on one wall. Travolta was always into airplanes, and he got his pilot's license by age 22. We can see his love of aviation present in the mansion's design, almost like you're stepping into the 1960s Pan Am era. There's also a stunning entrance hall with a custom floor design and multiple model airplanes, as well as two kitchens, one for serious cooking and one for more casual affairs, creating three separate dining areas that, according to Travolta, they're like those in hotels. Among the many features in the modern mansion, there's also a bed and breakfast style quarters and multiple suites for guests to relax. Of course, the best part for Travolta about this estate has got to be the outdoor features, like the 7,500 foot runway that extends right up to his back door, as well as two airplane parking pavilions and a separate lighted grass runway. His personal airport has more than enough room to store his collection of aircraft too, which include a USA Air Boeing 707, Boeing 707-138, Bombardier Challenger, and more. It's said that he currently owns four to five planes. When he's not up in the air, Travolta can enjoy the other features of his home, like the resort-style pool with hot tub out back. It even boasts a slide, patio space, and a dance floor with custom stonework. Another one of his favorite spots on the property is the cabana with bar that looks like an airport lounge and overlooks all of the action. Looking at a handful of John Travolta's massive properties, we can see that he and his late wife Kelly went above and beyond to craft the ultimate real estate portfolio, which included a massive fairy tale like property in Maine, a Calabasas villa estate, as well as the iconic Florida mansion where Travolta has his very own airport. Well, that's going to bring this house tour to an end. Let me know what you thought of his homes down in the comments, as well as who we should feature next. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.